Welcome to Computing Today. In this lesson, we are continuing on with simulations that we have been doing for a couple of weeks now, and we are going to be evaluating different simulations. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some more simulations and we are going to evaluate them and, and see what their purpose is. So without further ado, let me share my screen and we can get started. So this is lesson five of computing and we are evaluating simulations. My first question to you is what are simulations? We've gone over the definition for quite a few weeks now, for four weeks. I want you to really have a think, what are simulations? And put, those into your, put that into your own words. Pause the video now so you can have a think and answer that question. Okay, hopefully by now you've been able to answer it. A computer simulation is a program that models a real life situation. They let you try out things that would be too difficult or too dangerous to do in real life. There may be other reasons why you may not be able to do a simulation in real life, but usually it's because it's too difficult, too dangerous, it might be too time consuming or too quick to do in real life. But all it is, is it's a computer program that models a real life situation. My next question for you is when might you use simulations? So when might you use a simulation? I want you to think about all the simulations you have done because they can be examples. And if you've had experience using simulations in other situations, like I know some of you have, some of you have some gadgets at home that help um, where you can explore different simulations. When might you use a simulation? Pause the video so you can answer that question. Okay, fantastic. Have you answered that by now? So a simulation might be used where the real life situation is too dangerous, um, such as maybe exploring a deep cave. If it takes too long, for example, traveling to space to explore different planets. If it's too quick to study, for example, if you wanted to um, see the path of a shooting star, that would be very, very quick to study because it happens just like that. So you would actually probably need to have a simulation to watch it happen. Or if it's too expensive to create, if you wanted to design your own city, that would be so expensive because you would have to buy all the resources and materials. You would have to hire people to help you build it. And it is simply too expensive to create in real life. So a simulation might allow you to do that, a computer program or even some games allow you to do that. And they are also simulations um, so that you can have a go of modeling that real life situation through the simulation. You will find that throughout this lesson, when you're evaluating the simulations, you might notice that it's more than one reason um, for you to not be able to do a simulation in real life. OK, fantastic. Moving on. Can you think of all the different types of simulations that we have done? Here are some pictures to help you. Pause the video so you can answer that question. What kinds of simulations are then? Have a think about some of them. There are lots of different types of simulations. Over here, we've got a robot pet simulation. This is simulating looking after a real life animal. Here you've got a simulation of people uh, performing surgery. You can have simulations of driving cars, planes, rockets, but there are so many more different types of simulations because it can be based on any real life situation that, would, that you cannot perform in real life for a certain reason. So some simulations represent dangerous situations for training such as flying space flying in space or flying an aircraft driving a car when you don't have a license um, carrying out medical operations when you're not a doctor or a license you haven't gone and studied medicine or even piloting an airplane that would simply be too dangerous to do in real life but there are lots of other simulations um, which are activities that are just for fun, such as racing simulations, exploring the underwater simulations. Um, some simulations even in, include cooking. So you might have some games. I've seen some games such as Cooking Mama, which simulates decorating cakes and, and making different uh, recipes, which you could also do. Well, that's more for fun because you actually could do that in real life so long as you had an adult by your side. So. We are going to be evaluating simulations today. My first question to you is, are there any problems with simulations? I want you to pause the video after having a think about the different simulations that we have done and have we encountered any problems with them? Were they limited in any sense? Is there things that you cannot do with simulations? Pause the video so you can answer that question. Okay. 
But simulations are often too simple and don't really go into all the complexities that would happen in a real life situation. For example, if I go back to this slide here and I'm modeling in this simulation, I'm driving a car. This simulation might not show me speed bumps. It may not include the different weather that could happen that might affect driving. For example, when it's raining, you'd have to use your windshield. It might not show me the different lights that I have to use when I'm driving in dark or misty weather. OK, so most of the simulations are often too simple, simple. And unexpected problems can still occur in real life that are difficult to simulate. For example, let's use a different one. Um, if I was to let's go with this simulation of, of somebody performing a, a medical operation. OK, if this person's heart stopped beating, the simulation might not actually show that because these are real problems that exist in real life and a real doctor might have to um, use their tools to help revive the person and, and, and bring them back to life and get their heart started again. They might have to use some um, the electrical iron pumps. OK, but that simulation may not show the different situations that could occur. Simulations can also be very expensive to make. You have to think that special people who are skilled in designing simulations have to design the program and it can often take a very long time to put the simulation together and it requires a lot of money because they have to pay people who are very skilled. So there are lots of different problems that actually can occur from simulations. What we're going to do now is we are going to watch a few simulations and we are going to evaluate them and evaluate why they are a simulation in the first place and and some of the things about them so what you're going to do is you might find it more useful to log on to purple mash and watch this video as you're going along so you need to click on to do's and once you've clicked on to do you will see it says why simulate and you are going to complete this sheet which just talks about all the different simulations i'm going to show you and you're going to fill in the simulation name. So, for example, you've got all the names here, learning to fly a plane. I'm going to model the first one. So I'm going to do mapping the movement of outer space. So this is what it's going to look like. And then you're just going to type in each of the boxes to tell me about the simulation and evaluate it. OK, so I have my purple mash open, but that is exactly what it's going to look like. And now I'm going to show you the first video. OK, so I'm just going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to reshare it again. So as you can see, this is my purple mash. I'm going to be completing it. My first simulation that I'm going to be doing is mapping the movement of stars in outer space. Full stop. OK, now we're going to show you, I'm going to show you the video on that and we're going to complete this grid. We're going to do the first one together so that you get a rough idea of what you're supposed to do. So there's not going to be any sound in this, but that's fine because you just need to watch the simulation as it's happening. OK, so I'm just going to show you a, a small clip of it because you don't need to watch all of it. So that was mapping the movement of stars in outer space. Now I'm going to complete my simulation evaluation. So is this is the simulation of mapping the movement of the stars? And as you saw, they were using a map to connect the stars um, and see the distances between them. Is it too dangerous to do in real life? Pardon me. Um, so would it be too dangerous to do in real life? I want you to pause this video and have a think. Mapping the stars in outer space, is that too dangerous to do it in real life? And I'm going to put no. If you, and I'm going to put comma, no. If you were mapping the stars no. Mapping the stars is not dangerous. And you can just put no or yes. I'm just doing it in detail so that you can see. Is it too quick or too slow to do in real life? This simulation would be too. Now, what do you think? Too quick or too slow? Think about 
if I go back to it and you can see from each star to actually connect them and identify them, this would take too long to do in real life. For me to actually travel to space and travel to each of these stars would take far, far too long, which is why we have a simulation doing it. So I'm going to say this simulation would take far too long to do in real life. We'll stop. And I'm actually going to go back to this one, too dangerous to do in real life. Now, if you're mapping the stars from home, no, it's not. But in real life, to actually map the stars, you'd have to travel to them. So I'm actually going to change my answer. I'm going to put yes. It would be too dangerous to travel to outer space and identify the distance between stars comma as i am not a trained astronaut astronaut to double check my spelling on that and don't worry about it if it's not spelled correctly because it's just for astro not okay fantastic full stop um, and now we're going on to the next bit. Is this too expensive to do in real life? Sorry, that's the next one. To actually, for me to travel to space and travel between the stars and identify the distance, is that going to be something that is too expensive for me to do in real life? Well, think about it. I've got to have the money to travel to outer space. I've got to have uh, the money for the equipment that would last me when I'm in space. I have to have money to pay other astronauts to come with me because I can't go by myself because there are many things that I need to do and be able to control on the rocket that we we going. So thinking about all these things, this would be too expensive to do in real life as there are lots of costs to factor in comma such as and i'm going to list the things i said such as rockets ooh, equipment what else have i got to factor in um workers lots and lots of different things is it impossible to do in real life? Well, actually, for me to travel to space is not impossible, but to travel between the stars within my lifetime is impossible. It takes years and years and years, sometimes light years, which is a very, very long time to do in real life. So actually, in my lifetime, this would be completely impossible. So I'm going to put yes. This would be impossible to... between the different stars in my life. We'll stop. Okay. And this is exactly what you're going to do. Okay. You might want to pause the video and have a read of my example so you can get a, a real feel of what you're supposed to do. And now that you've done that, I'm just going to go back to my slides and what we're going to do is we are going to watch the different simulations which have been recorded for you and then you are going to complete the rest of the sheet so i've done the first one you don't need to do mapping the movement of stars or outer space if you want to because you've got an extra box you can choose your own simulation that you would like to write about and we're going to fill in the grid so let's click on the first video which is learning to fly a plane Okay, and I've just sped this one up slightly.
Apologies, it's buffering. OK, and I'm just going to stop that there because you don't need to watch all of it to get an idea of what you're doing. So what you need to do now is you need to go on to Purple Mash. And you are going to complete the next section. So we're going to put learning to fly a plane. And you've got to complete. Is this too dangerous to do in real life? And you're, you're coming from your position as a child. As a child, is it too dangerous for you to fly a plane in real life? Is it too quick or too slow in real life? Is it too expensive to do in real life? Or is it impossible to do in real life? Pause the video so that you can complete those sections and then press play because we're going to go to the next one. The next one is going to be exploring the bottom reaches oh, it means of the ocean okay so for this one i'm going to show you the next simulation for this here we go OK, and I'm going to stop it there. So going back to today's, we should have done learning to fly a plane next, but sorry about that. So we'll do this one anyway, because I've shown that to you. So exploring the bottom reaches of the ocean. Let's just swap those around. Oopsie daisy. I'm just going to put it in here so we can do that one next. Exploring. Oh, you did do that one. Sorry, I just I forget it now. You have done learning to fly a plane. Learning to fly a plane. Miss Williams is being silly. She's forgotten. And this one was exploring the bottom reaches of the ocean. So for this one, was you saw that the person was exploring the bottom reaches of the ocean. Was that something that is too dangerous to do in real life? Or is that something that can be done? Pause the video and you can answer that question. Now think about it, is it too quick or too slow to do it in real life? And you have to think about all the different factors that go into exploring the bottom of the ocean. That person is wearing a scuba diving suit with a tank, an oxygen tank on their back. And for you to be able to do that, you actually do have to take a course in scuba diving to be able to scuba dive. So think about how long that's going to take in real life. And pause the video so you can answer that bit. And then you want you to think about if it's too expensive to do it in real life. Could that be a problem that occurs from it? Why would people want to do the simulation? Is it actually too expensive to do in real life? How accessible is that? And lastly, is it impossible to do in real life? Pause the video so that you can answer those questions. Fantastic. And the last one is designing a new skyscraper okay so for this one i'm going to show you the last video of them designing the skyscraper
OK, I'm going to stop it there and then we're going to fill this in. So is this something that is too dangerous to do in real life? Pause the video so you can answer that question. Now moving on to the next box, is it too quick or too slow to do in real life? And I just want to let you know before you even think about that, to build a building takes years. And a skyscraper is a very, very, very tall building. So think about how long that is going to take. Pause the video so you can answer that question. And then you're going to answer, is it too expensive to do in real life? Again, similar to mapping the SARS, think about all the equipment that would be needed to build a skyscraper, including um, human resources. You need humans to also, you need builders and employ them and they need to be paid for their wages. You need contractors. There needs to be certain checks put in place. Think about how much money that is going to cost in real life. And then lastly, is this impossible to do in real life? This should be a question you're able to answer because skyscrapers do actually exist. So is that impossible to do in real life? Fantastic. OK, so by now you should have completed Oopsie days, let me share that again. By now you should have completed the table. And if I go back to my active slides, we've watched all the different videos. So just make sure you go through all your answers, read them again, make sure you're happy with them, and then you can click save and exit, and that will save your work. Okay, I hope you had fun doing those simulations. See you in the next video. Bye, year three.